this this is this this should not be in here. It shouldn't Amen. be in here. All right. What about uh, parents? Uh, I had two of them, <laughs> and uh, and I, uh, I I appreciated my mom and dad. My when I lived at home, as I said, my dad when when he spoke, it was the law. That's just the way it was, and. He wasn't even a saved man at that time. But with my dad, he just didn't put up with a lot of foolishness. Now, I would, I hate to admit this, but I'd talk back to my mother, but I did not talk back to my daddy. No way. When I got older, you know, I would sort of pick with my mother, and she felt like she's going to, well, she thinks she's going to try to whip me, you know, and I'd grab her by the wrist, you know, and, and stick my tongue out at her stuff, just playing with her, and she didn't just make her that much madder. I tried to grab my dad's wrist one time. He almost broke my arm. I remember. And um, I'd rather have I'd rather had ten whippings by my mother than one by my dad. That's just the way it was. Amen. Mom was about five foot three. Daddy was five eleven and strong. And boy, he'd wear you out. But he kept me out of prison. Amen. He kept me out of jail. Thank God. And uh, let me tell you something, young folks. Uh, I was. I was more afraid of my dad than I was the police department. Amen. Let me tell you something. If a person does not respect and have fear for their mother and father, they're not going to have respect or fear for the police department That's right. either. Any other authority, teachers or anybody else. But parents, uh, their definition for parents is adult whose actions drive teenagers crazy. Well, I remember driving uh, my mom and dad crazy on a couple of occasions. Yeah, I sure did. I remember bringing some tears and some gray hair to my mother. And after I got saved, I apologized. Amen. I apologized to my mom and dad for for my rebellion and uh, tried to join the Navy to get away from it and was signed up to go in and uh, failed a physical. And I was a bitter young man, a bitter young man. I didn't understand what was going on. I was not getting along with dad, not getting along with mom. I said, well, I'll join the Navy and I'll get away from that. And, uh, and uh, I didn't know that it broke my mother's heart that she cried. And, and uh, as the Lord would have it, I, I've got an arm I messed up playing football and they wouldn't take me in the Navy. And then right before I was scheduled to go in, I met Rhonda, 1974, July, uh, January 26th. I was scheduled to go in the Navy in February the 4th of that same year. So I would have had to have left her if I would have gotten into the Navy. Plus, six months later, I trusted Christ as my Savior. Amen. So then I said, oh, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Yep. That's what I've been looking, that's what I've been needing, what I've been looking for. And the rest is history. We got married in 75 and we've been raising each other ever since. How about that? <laughs> but uh, uh, I, uh, I respect and love my parents. And my mother's still living today. She's remarried. But I love my mother. I love her. And I appreciate her telling me about Jesus Christ because she was the very first one that did. And I thank the Lord for that. But uh, what about you, you, your brothers and sisters? Uh, uh, I've got one brother. He's three years younger than me. He just turned 52. My brother was a good athlete. He was a tremendous pitcher. Uh, and he played basketball. And I ran track and played football. So we had all the sports covered between the two of us just about. Didn't have soccer back in those days. Say, where was that at? I guess back, we're still over in Europe, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, I love my brother, and I still do. And uh, uh, if anybody would, would jump on my brother today, even today, they'd have to jump on me too. Because I, I love him, I really do. I wouldn't allow anybody to, to uh, hurt him. But uh, uh, so to me, this this right here is, and I know it's trying to be funny, but that's, what about your sibling? That's your, your brother or sister, whether young or, young or older. It says here, they're all, their alternate definition for a sibling is a monster, <laughs> younger or older than you are, who lives in your house but couldn't possibly be related to you or any other human being. <laughs> Let's see, that's supposed to be real, real cute, real funny. But listen to me. Uh, I was able to lead my brother to Christ, and I was very, I don't use, like, I don't use the word proud because it's the, the connotation of, in the Bible, but I used to go watch my brother play ball, and I was just, just tickled to death by how he would strike people out, and 
I said, that's my brother. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I still, I still love him today. We don't always get, you know, agree on everything. We didn't then, but because uh, he's stubborn, and I am too. But certainly he's not a monster. Not in my eyes now. Not in my eyes when we were five. Not in my eyes when we were ten. We almost died together. I mean, like a dummy. I was down in the basement with a kerosene lantern. I filled it full of gasoline. And I was getting ready to light it. And he and I were down there. I was about nine. He was about six or somewhere around there. And our babysitter called us. Can you imagine what happened if I lit that wow. thing? Why well, it'd have blown that house off the foundation? Hmm. And God, and I look back on those things and see how God watched over us. Amen. But lastly, what about entertainment? Uh, this thing's got a lot more in here. But what about entertainment? This you got you got to hear this. Uh, there's there's uh, they deal with guilt, school, money, death, stress, addiction, self-image, friends, and dating. Okay, but let's finish it up with entertainment. Now, I am, I, I, I'm sure you know that Lucifer, in his original form, was a musical angel, uh, cherub. He wasn't an angel, he was a cherub. He was the anointed cherub that covered. Ezekiel 28 said he walked up and down the stones of fire. He sealeth up the sun. He was the perfection of everything that God made. And he walked up and down in the uh, Garden of Eden. And Lucifer was a cherub that was a musical cherub. He had pipes built in his body where he could lead the sons of God and praise to God till he saw his beauty and he sinned against God and God cast him out of the third heaven. And the old saying is, when Lucifer fell from heaven, he fell right smack in the middle of the Baptist church choir. And I, <laughs> I just about believe that because I've seen more trouble in music in churches than you can yep. shake a stick at. But... Uh, when Lucifer came down here and became Satan and the devil, he didn't lose his musical abilities, folk. There's some things I don't know a thing about, but I do know about rock music. That was my life for many years. But here on entertainment here, it says, My parents don't understand. They won't let me listen to radio station KBUZ. They won't let me rent this movie I want to see or buy that group CD. Hey, don't they trust me? Mom, uh, don't mom and dad trust me? Besides, just because I watch something doesn't mean I'll go out and do it. If I'm not mistaken, the Klebold and the boys out of Columbine, that's what they had seen before yeah. they went and done what they did. That's right. So it does affect people, and don't think it don't. But it says, uh, alternate definition for entertainment, movies, TV, music, radio, definitely not dad singing in the shower. <laughs> All right? But it says... There's a way to show mom and dad that you can be trusted. Now, I want you to listen to this wording. Just listen real close. There is a way to show you, mom and dad that you can be trusted. Offer to let them watch that video before you see it. Do what? Offer to let them watch the video? Who's running the show around yeah, the house? That's right. so you see how subtle that is? Uh, while we were driving together, ask them to turn to uh, KBUZ to check out the disc jockey as well as the songs he or she plays. In time, mom and dad will learn to trust your judgment and give you more freedom. The old saying is, you give an inch and it'll take a mile. That's right. Uh, every time my mom and dad put trust and confidence in me before I got saved, I let them down. Whether they knew about it or whether they didn't. Folks, listen, there's an old nature you got to avoid, and the only, the only way you're going to be able to combat that is, well, the Bible says, uh, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word, mm -hmm. Psalm 119. So that'll work for a young lady too, right? And um, so this is definitely something you want to stay away from, and it's certainly something that you would want to tell your friends to stay away from. Amen. And not only is the text perverted, the scripture, but these pages in here is just too much for one day. Yeah. Okay? All right. That's, it's time to stop. We could have gone over some more, but...